So in this video, we're going to try and solve the ODE y double dash plus 8y dash plus 3y is equal to 3e to the 2t. So this is going to continue on from the previous video, which found the solution to this differential equation, which you can see is quite similar to this one here, um, was what's written here. Okay. So what we can see is the difference between them is on the right hand side of this first one, we had uh, equal to zero. And the right hand side here, we've now got some function involving time. So this one here was the homogeneous version of the equation, all right, where the right hand side was equal to zero. Um, now what we've got um, over here is a non-homogeneous equation because the right hand side is not equal to zero. All right, so we're going to work through solving this. And of course, the first step of these questions is usually to find the solution to the homo homogeneous part. Okay, but since we've already done that um, in the previous video, I'm not going to repeat it. So from that, what we can conclude is yh, okay, so the solution to the homogeneous part is equal to what we just had here um, from that previous video. Oops, sorry, 601t. All right, so the next step that we need to take is to figure out the solution to the particular equation, and that's when we look at the non-homogeneous part. So we are going to consider the 3e to the 2t on the right-hand side of the equation. So what we need to do is have a look at what we've got on the right-hand side of the equation and try and find something similar in the guessing table, which I've put over here. So ours is 3e to the 2t. If we look down here, which is telling us uh, forms of the right-hand side, what we can see is that this one kind of looks similar. We've got e to the at, very similar to this. So what that means is we're going to assume yp, our particular solution, looks like this one here. So a e to the at, and the little a here all right, corresponds to what's on the right-hand side of the equation. So in our case, it's going to correspond to the 2. So let's have a guess at this being our solution. So yp equals ae to the 2t. So what we now need to figure out is what this big A is actually equal to. And we get that by taking a couple of derivatives of this equation and then substituting them back up into our differential equation. So if we take a first derivative here, um, A stays out the front. The derivative of e to the 2t is going to be itself and then multiply by the derivative of what's up here in the power. So the derivative of 2t with respect to t is 2. All right, so that's the chain rule that I'm employing. So I could rewrite this a bit neater, like so. And then I want to take a second derivative. So again, applying the chain rule, what I'm going to find is that the 2 up here kind of gets collapsed into the front, and the derivative becomes 4ae to the 2t. So now let's take these um, three expressions and substitute them back up into the left-hand side of the equation. So that means we're going to have the second derivative, so 4ae to the 2t, plus 8 times the first derivative, so 8 times this one here, 2ae, sorry, to the 2t. And then we've got 3 times that original function. And we're treating this as the non-homogeneous equation, so we do need to carry across this right-hand side. All right, so we should be able to do a little bit of simplification here. Remember, the goal is to figure out what a needs to be equal to. So if you look through here, what you're going to find is e to the 2t is appearing in every single term. So if you divide by that, it's going to disappear. So I can rewrite this a bit nicer as 4a. 8 times 2 is going to leave me with 16a, and I've got 3a, and all of that has to be equal to the 3. So if we put this together, we're going to end up with 23a is equal to 3, and that means that a on its own has to be 3 divided by 23. So we've now solved for that random constant that was appearing in the equation, so we can now write out our particular solution, including that a constant. So that means that yp is going to equal 3 on 23 e to the 2t. All right, so the final step is to just kind of put all of this together. So we've got the homogeneous solution and we've got the particular solution. And we know that the overall solution, which I'll call y, 
is going to be both of them added together. So if we put them together, we're going to get c1 e to the whatever it was exponent. Um, c2, again we had that random exponent. And then adding on this um, part at the end. So since we were not given any conditions to work with, it means we're not going to be able to figure out what these constants C1 and C2 actually are. So the best we can do is this kind of general solution to the equation. So that would be the answer to the question. So that's all there is uh, for this video.